Well, hey, how are you? This is Aaron McKay with Bird Be Gone coming back with another installment of Ask an Expert. Today I am joined by my wonderful colleagues Mike Doherty and Brian Donahoe. How are you guys How's everybody doing, doing today? Thank you very much, Aaron. It's, yeah. uh, good to be here talking about birds today. Yeah, I'm happy to have you guys back. It is a nice... Yeah. Uh, Nice yeah, change of pace it instead is. of being uh, stuck in a home stuck, office. Stuck yeah. in my home. It is. Yeah, in my it lodge. is starting to get fun. <laughs> See a person in the real life flesh. Right. Uh, so today we have a fun topic. We're actually talking about sensory bird control products. And by sensory bird control products, we're talking about products that impact a bird's senses, namely their sight, their smell, uh, their, their, uh, their ability to hear, or if they touch. And the way a, those things are going to impact a bird is as that bird is maybe flying around a structure, they're likely going to hear something first before they get close to that area or that location where you don't want them. And as they get closer, they're going to be able to see something. And if, let's say, maybe you have a, a sound-based deterrent, right. uh, that might push them off, right? But if that bird is more bold or they're more eager to get in that location or they've been there before, they're going to come into contact that they can see. Right. And let's say there's a flock of birds, like lots of them. So they're really, really excited. They want to be in that structure because that ledge looks prime. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So they go and they get closer. Now they can start smelling things. Right. right. But let's say that that bird, that, that flock has been nesting in that spot for right. a really, really right. long time. Mm -hmm. so they're gonna come they want to go back in there because they already made their house, right? Yes. They're invested, so they want to get back in. That's when they can actually touch things. So we're talking all things sensory bird control products. So if you're new to the bird control industry, or maybe your homeowner trying to protect uh, your investment, uh, these are a great place to start when it comes uh, to bird control. So today's conversation, uh, we're going to be talking about all things sensory bird control products. We're going to start with auditory bird control, then sight-based or visual-based bird control uh, sensory products. Then we're gonna go smell-based and then touch-based. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds great. Talk All right. Me. Let's so let's start it. with auditory bird control products. Who wants to lead us off with that one? I'll lead it off with the take it away, Mike. Great story with the uh, Bird Chase Ultra uh, Solar Sonic. Okay. Uh, situation out in Pomona at a, very, a large 1.8 million square foot building. <clears throat> uh, we were sitting in front of the facilities manager, and they wanted to ask what the solutions were because they had. Seagulls, thousands of seagulls flying over their building wow. and dropping on the executives' cars, of course. And uh, you know, one of the proposals just that we talked about was putting up a gold wire system over that building. And it was, yes. I said, oh, it's going to start at six figures. And he said, nope, that's out of the question. <laughs> right. So uh, I said, well, we have the Sonic unit. Um, I said, okay, we'll we'll take ten. I said, you know, there's a thirty day money back on it. You know, let's give it a go. Um, Waited till 20 something days to call him back, and I said, How's it all working for you? He says, It's working fantastic. That oh, was, awesome. was a really, really good example of how, how well that can work. And it was for seagulls. That's hmm. great. That's well, great. Well, maybe for people that don't know what the Solar Bird Chase Supersonic is, uh, maybe walk, walk us through uh, what it does and how it works, how it actually impacts birds that you don't want around your area. Yeah, so it's an audible sound. Uh, one of the things that, you know, People talk about ultrasonic sounds. The birds hear on the same waves, the wavelengths that we do. So right. it's an audible sound. And we've proven that. We've done studies and proven that, right? Absolutely. We, we, had, we yes. had a study conducted. We used to sell ultrasonic. Doesn't work. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> so, you know, it can, you can cycle it through from uh, pigeons, grackles, geese, uh, seagulls on, on, the, on the selection process. You know, you can dial it in and, and pick it for the for a bird but the best one seems to be the general that cycles through all the birds mm -hmm. on the on the system and the sounds that, that come out of it got it right and as far as the actual sounds that are played what actually is coming out of the speaker system i'm not going to try and imitate it <laughs> <laughs> i love it probably probably bad. <laughs> no, <I'm gonna laughs> so, some, something i picked up on in the in that story mike uh, you said you said that we started with something like like the gold wire system mm -hmm. uh, it was too much money and then you know, you came back around with the sound unit option, which was a lot less money, and we come across that a lot yeah, throughout absolutely. the day. And and usually, it's a nice it's a nice fallback because you know if, if you try it and it works, great, problem yeah. solved, right? It's inexpensive, it yeah. works, not a lot of labor. You plug it in, yeah, you program super it. Super simple, easy. Um, set it and go. And, and, and that's that. And if it doesn't work, God forbid, it doesn't work. You know, we carry that satisfaction guarantee, so you can send it back. We can try something else because I know in our industry, sticker shocks the 
big exactly. big problem. Absolutely. And and we want to help the person, but but at the same time, uh, you know, we're, we're going to recommend what we believe is going to be the uh, you know fail proof uh, product. But uh, you know, we understand that that sometimes people don't want to uh, spend the money for like netting or flat track, what have you. And and this is a great uh, alternative. And it's been around forever. Shoot, it's <laughs> been a staple in the industry 12, for a long time. Twelve years for that product. A long yeah. time. Yeah, it's helped a lot of people. So, so I just I picked up on that. Uh, for those of you doing bird work, it, it's good. It's a good alternative uh, to at least try to stop, you know, the problem in the immediate future. So. Right. Yeah, and I, I think with with the sound based deterrents, I know you you kind of walk through all the different settings. Uh, Mike, but for those who have never heard or seen the product, basically what it does is it has a two-minute recording slot where it plays the distress calls of, of birds that are specific to that setting, and then it'll play the predatory calls of hawks and falcons, right? Correct. Right. Yes. So these are sounds that people can hear. Uh, they're not ultrasonic or subsonic sounds like uh, they mentioned earlier. Uh, there are a lot of products out in the market that uh, will, will market or sell based on hypersonic or subsonic, and they just flat out don't work, like Brian was saying uh, earlier. Uh, so this, these are playing recorded sounds, which means everyone can hear them. So, so any other comments on auditory based or sound based? Yeah, yeah, they work surprisingly well for ravens and crows. Hmm. Yeah, you know, that, I mean, that's kind of that's that, the first thing I go really? to. Okay, with that's it. the ravens and crows for whatever and reason, and I think it has to do with how intelligent crows are, ravens are. If you've ever dealt with them out there, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it's the fact that they know what the sound is, and they can't see where they can't see the actual falcon yeah. or the hawk, and it just drives them nuts. Mm. So I mean, that's my theory. I don't know what's inside a bird's head. Sure. <laughs> so, um, but but you know, that's a good option for crows and ravens too. So you know, something to keep in your back pocket and think about. Because I know ravens are a nuisance, and uh, crows are a nuisance in a lot of places, yeah. residential and commercial. Especially by my house when I'm sleeping. I've got right. them in my. Oh yeah, that's always fun too. waking up to that. Yeah. Yeah, they're in my place too. <laughs> so, you guys want to move on and talk about um, sight based sensory uh, deterrents? Absolutely. So how do they work and why do they work? <laughs> sight based. You want me to start with the sight based? Go for the sight based. All right. Sight based, we, we call visual deterrents. They, uh, they, they work simply by just being. Uh, you know, they're, they're flashy, they're reflective, they move a little bit. Uh, you know, they, they just make the birds uncomfortable. They're not yeah. going to touch it. it. It's something that they see and it, it, it kind of disorients them. Uh, examples of this would be what our reflect the bird, yep. our scare eye balloons, our flash tape, yep. uh, uh, scare eye diverters, things things like that. And uh, they really they just make the bird uncomfortable. They don't they don't like seeing this foreign object in in yep. their area. You know, making flash and kind of moving around and, yep. and just you know we I mean we don't as humans don't like a strobe light on us or you know blinking yeah. light bugs us and you get that you know low battery blinking light and it drives us nuts and it doesn't scare us but you know same kind of same concept with birds they don't like it um trying to think common uses for them they're, they're a great residential option they're a great uh, yep. Yep. product to buy if you just have some birds outside yep. your home that that yeah, the, are a little bit residential of residential right right mm -hmm. um I know they're available a lot of, uh, in retail too so it's, yep. it's accessible to the public without necessarily having to call a uh Supplier like us or, or a, um, a pest control, wildlife control operator. Uh, I think the ease of use is the biggest appeal right. to, that's, that's to visual. Easy, less expensive. Right. It's on the, the lower side of the right. expenses, yes. Right, right. And the most common one is the uh, the, the fake owls or the red tail hawks. <laughs> I forgot about the hawk. <laughs> <laughs> right. I use those uh, I use those as, as, you know, for the guys in the pest control side of the things saying, hey, look for those. They're a lead. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right. Right. Um, but occasionally those have worked. You know, sure. the red tail hawk. We we sell that in a retail mm -hmm. setting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's just it, you're just trying to make them uncomfortable with something that they don't want to see. The, why a, a flash or something shiny is that that deters them? We're not exactly sure of that, but sure, it right. makes them uncomfortable. It's, yep. And these are products where if you catch it early enough, it'll work. I, I think yeah. that's the key. It's just when they first start, you know, if they're in your bushes or down, you know, eating in your grass or mm -hmm. ducks at a pool is a real common one. I heard yep. the, the best one for that is yep. the, the scare eye balloon scare floating eye balloon. around in the pool. That's yep. a, the best use for it. That does work. So if any of you out there listening have ducks in your pool, fill up, you know, <laughs> blow up a couple of those scare eye balloons, let it float around. That'll take care of your problem. Yep. And I think just to, to highlight something you mentioned, a, a lot of these sensory-based products are going to be available for homeowners and or residential users right? Uh, at a Home Depot, at a Lowe's, at an Ace True Value. 
And because they are accessible and easy to use, they're usually the first line of defense Correct. when it comes to uh, engaging in, in bird control. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So oftentimes, if you are, say, a pest control provider, pest control operator, or a wildlife person, you can start here because uh, when, when a homeowner or a DIY user uh, starts uh, encountering the cost of, say, more, more commercial style bird control products, uh, they're, they're, they're probably going to default to something that's more familiar. But you can step into that exchange or that conversation saying, hey, this is a great place to start. Right. Uh, if these birds haven't been around here for a really long time, let's start. Yeah, let's start here. But in the, effect, in the event that it doesn't work, here are my suggested next steps. So what that does, if, if it by chance doesn't work, it sets you up as the expert. Right. So you can come back in and say, hey, I know we had that conversation before. It didn't work out. So sorry. But remember, we said it might happen, and here's the next thing that we, we can do. Right. And I, th I think the most expensive visual <clears throat> deterrent is around, what, $45, $50 price point, the reflective bird? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's forty nine fifty. Yeah. Right. So it, like, like Aaron said, it's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to, um, to smell-based. Olfactory. Olf olfactory. So smell-based sensory products. What are they? How do they work? Well, it's, uh, it's a methyl anthranolate, typically, that, that works off of the olfactory part of it. The bird sm comes in and smells it, and they, they typically do not like the smell of the methyl anthranolate because it agitates their trigeminal nerve. Whoa. Can you say that again? Trigeminal nerve. I'm my, glad you said that. I wasn't, I wasn't going to try to pronounce that. I don't think we that. have them, but... Thank you, Mike. My impression of you and your overall IQ just went up. You yeah, said that up. you just owned it. Trigeminal nerve is what it is. So that's specific to birds, right? <laughs> yes, it is. How someone figured that out, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the first studies were done done with it back in the 70s with methylenthranolate and fogging into large applications with uh, starlings. Okay. And there, you can see, you can read all the studies on it, but backed up, back in through the, uh, some of the SDS sheets, you can yep. research it. That's where I saw it a long time ago. Yep. That's great. Um, and methyl and what is it? It's, as far as, from what I, from, from what I've read, it's a, it's an, it's a artificial flavor and it's, it, it's something that they found is also in grape seeds. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's an artificial flavoring, obviously at a very strong percentage and dose mm -hmm. that you have to, you can't just put it in like you would for grape soda so it's a, it'd be much stronger than that <laughs> sure and they found that birds do not do not like this smell yeah yeah so it's the extract basically from the seeds of grapes uh it's generally recognized as safe for a grass product right uh and um it's methyl and threonate use it as a like a tincture like my my son loves grape soda i don't like it no. But when he drinks it, he's basically ingesting a diluted amount of, of methyl and yep. Absolutely. Uh, so we, we are forgetting some additional smell-based stuff, right? Sure. We just released a, a brand new product, which actually has some of the sight-based stuff in it uh, that we mentioned in the last, the last category of sensory products. Right. Uh, the Spectrum V holographic gel. So uh, that has some essential oils baked into it that also impacts the bird sense of smell. Right. So, yeah. so, so methyl and isn't the only thing that, yep. that irritates. No, that's, yeah, this is the newer one. Their eyes and mouth. So yes. we, we have uh, other ingredients in the Spectrum V that, that irritate the eyes and mouth. So the Spectrum V combines, combines pretty, uh, well, three of these. It doesn't yep. make any sounds. We'll, we'll, get, there. we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to put bells around the We'll be back on in 2025. With, we'll get that covered. <laughs> so funny. But sight, smell, and, and touch. So, so it, they do smell it. They, they do, they do uh, yep. uh, get irritated by it. So, yep. and, and I think that's one of its big advantages. Uh, and, 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 it were, and again, these are good starting points for, yep. for, um, for bird control. And I think the most common use of a uh, sense of smell or an olfactory product is methylenthranolate for geese. Yes, All right. actually, that Geese. there are several forms of it, but uh, yes, uh, going back into the, the Spectrum V is that the closer they the, the the best part is that when they if they do get in close and they they do touch it that birds do not like that on their feet, right? And oh. what happens is if they get it on them they 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 try to clean it off and it gets in around their soft tissue around their eyes so that also does irritate them. Hmm. So what you just did is you shifted gears to the sense of touch. Correct. Yeah. Got sorry. It. So as funny. a bird gets closer, they actually can can step in the gel inadvertently, and they expect <clears throat> to be able to pick up their foot. 
mm-hmm. like they normally do, and there's resistance. They don't like that sensation no, at all. And then they go into the whole preening thing, and they don't en- enjoy that. Yeah, I, I was sort of likened it to uh, stepping in gum in the grocery store parking lot. Right. You're not going to step back on it, are you? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And, um, and that concept's been around forever absolutely. in this industry. Yep. You know, the concept of gel, and you know, we've seen it in one form for another or forever. Um, Ours just, uh, you know, is in that dish, so, so it makes it a little bit easier to work with, easier to install, yep. easier, easier to, clean to remove. Off. It doesn't right. soak. It doesn't soak into the stucco right. on the on yep. the on the building and stain right. it. So for anyone who's used gel, they, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know when installing it. I mean, you're inevitably going to get some on you or your clothes or, or what have you. We've and, all and we've, we've all seen the squiggle mark that's right. caked with dust. Right. And and this is something that will actually stick to their feet and, and come back off. I know there's some other products in the market where they may. Stick, touch it, but it's not going to stick. It's they're just going to kind of lift their foot off. So you know, this is this does a little bit better job of really amplifying that touch yeah. uh, irritant to the equation. So that's good. Yeah. So we we kind of did a br- very very brief <clears throat> overview. We'll probably do some deep dives on specific products in future podcast episodes. But this is a high level overview of sensory bird control products. One final question I wanted to leave us with. Uh, because a lot of a lot of people's first question is when should I use them? When should I not use them? Uh, I think a, a, a concept that was really really helpful for me when I was first learning about bird control is the concept of resident and non-resident birds. So how how does that question or conversation of resident versus non-resident impact your choice to use sensory bird deterrence? Definitely definitely going to fall on to, you know work better on a non-resident bird or on a, an occasional visit by a bird. That's you where go. your Great. visual deterrents are. Going to be right. most effective versus a, a resident flock of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It, you know, that, that amount of effectiveness definitely decreases with the larger number of birds, of resident birds. Got it. Right. Yeah. And you can think of it like this too non resident birds are looking for a new residence. If yeah. you make that new yeah. residence they, uncomfortable for them with any of these products, they're going to move on. Yep. You know, it's just like if we're looking for a home and neighborhood, you know, there's certain things we see that we don't like, we're going to move on. We're going to have some grass. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So that's a good point. Yep. That's a good point. That's good. Yeah, yep. so non-resident birds, they're just birds hanging out, looking for some place to hang out. They're not necessarily invested in the structure. Uh, resident birds, they're invested in the structure. They come back by way of habit. Right. Uh, so if you apply stress to them through sensory deterrence, whether it be auditory, sight, uh, smell, or touch, they're going to push through some of that stress because they're they're already – that's right. their home. That's their investment. So they're going to push through. Uh, but we'll talk more about that the, that concept of resident and non-resident birds in, in a future uh, podcast. But I think it's really, really helpful when we're talking about sensory bird products mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. So we'll wrap it. I think All it's right. a long podcast, but I'm going right. to take it yeah. to the bank because you guys are gold. Sounds good. Hey, I'm really proud Appreciate of you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good right, afternoon. Guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.